I've been a psychotherapist for 23 years. I work with individuals, couples, and families, making visible how family structures that were created generations ago still affect people's lives today. My husband is a general contractor. He's been renovating older homes for about the same number of years, so he too works with the influence of history on the homes that he's been asked to repair and redesign and remodel. One of the themes in the many people's lives I've worked with has to do with experience of distance and connect, disconnection in families and in ancestries. So similar to a missing floor plan in an architect's blueprint, families operate in this same way, an experience of grief, of disconnection, earlier in the generations can continue to have an effect in the present. So over many years of providing guidance from the therapist chair, I noticed again and again how people seek therapy not only to alleviate their individual experience of pain, but to perhaps address grief-laden and traumatized family networks. This, this hope, this longing, often remains invisible to people themselves, but within it, there's a wisdom operating that knows how it is we experience life as an individual is always in close connection with our families. So the more in my work with people, both one-on-one -on -one and in groups, I was able to um, provide a way for these early histories, early ancestral influences to be acknowledged and honored and made visible. The more I began to think about the relationship between our lives as individuals, the families we come from, what it means to be an American, and the blueprint in our country's history. I began to think about three things. The American quest for psychological health, our first human need, that is to belong, and the most challenging truths in our country's history. I mentioned earlier this image about blueprints, architects' plans. I never met my great-grandparents, but their place in the fabric, in the blueprint of our family remains, though largely invisible to my conscious mind. So thinking about all these things together, I also noticed how Today, there seems to be an unfolding movement of Americans learning, desiring to know who and where we come from. Genealogical databases, DNA tests, the television show, Who Do You Think You Are, are just some evidence of this movement. This also reflects wisdom that knows our first place of belonging is with our families and our ancestries. So eventually, I got to the point in these noticings and in my work with people where I came to see that perhaps one of the greatest shadows in our country's history is that the United States was founded on disconnection from family. Through immigration, through genocide, through slavery. Disconnection from family is profoundly woven into these histories. The individual experience of grief, guilt, shame, how might these 
perhaps be in connection with these larger movements in our history in these blueprints. So while noticing and working with people, I also could see the brilliance in our human species that knows we're more alike than we are different. And the best way to locate this is receiving life as a daughter or a son from our parents. So <clears throat> imagine that life flows through all the generations that came before us. It flows through our ancestors, our great-grandparents, our grandparents, our parents through to each one of us like a waterfall. Our task, our invitation, our birthright is to receive life fully. Life doesn't flow from daughters and sons back up to parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. To do anything other than to receive life fully is like trying to push water uphill. Now, with all that's happened in the generations before us, all that's happened, all that hasn't happened, each of us listening to this talk shares a common fate. Life got through. Life got through to each one of us. This waterfall shows us, reminds us, that despite our American compressed focus on the parent-child family structure, there are no children without grandparents. This flow of life reminds us that there's an absence of judgment in life, of skin color, of religion, of language, of home country, of gender, of body size, all the kinds of things our mind is inclined to think about that involves judgment and separation, and experience of otherness. This flow of life may be key to helping us recognize restoration of belonging so that we can look more clearly at those aspects of history that continue to affect us today. Trauma bonds created between colonizer and colonized, enslaver and enslaved. The place of both the enslaved and colonized as well as the colonizer and the enslaver. These histories ask to be seen more clearly so that we can more truly understand today's experience of racism. These histories, this waterfall, this blueprint asks us to see how deeply out of our humanness, out of our coping, out of our love, we can be inclined toward identifying with or excluding or some of both those who caused or created suffering or those who experienced it in the generations before us. This waterfall, this flow of life helps us to value truth over innocence and belonging over exclusion. And 
reminds us that the ones who've experienced the histories that have already happened are the best ones to carry these fates. We don't see how much out of our humanness we're inclined toward trying to recreate or blindly prevent the history that's already happened. Today's experience, the complexity of racism, keeping in mind all that I'm saying, also invites us to see the relationship between blindness to whiteness and its relationship with disconnection from indigenous European strength and wisdom. We're asked to see that whiteness is not an ancestor. So thinking about all that I'm saying, it's a big consequence for us to minimize, to deny the history behind us, the truths still in process of asking to be made visible. Consider the fact, join me in remembering that American wealth and power were created out of slavery and on soil, home to families and societies for generations upon generations before European contact. Now think for a moment about the field of economic debt that surrounds us and consider the contribution it could make for all of us to take up the task together to look at more truthfully, more deeply, the early missing floor plan in our country's history that's led us to today. The complexity of history for us as individuals and our families as a country asks us to remember that what we experience as individuals is always in connection with the context and the movements in the histories that surround the individual. We've proven ourselves, the United States, over and over again with examples of innovation, intelligence, ingenuity. Equally important is developing and expanding our capacity for consciousness, for wisdom, for humility in this transformative time in American history. Remember the waterfall? Notice that you're still breathing. Each of us, with all of the history and mystery of life being passed on to us, listening to this talk is receiving life. On behalf of all the ones who came before us, all the ones who come after us, here's to each of us receiving life fully together. Thank you.